I think about our work a lot as connecting, you know, that one thing you see on the shelf with really the larger systems behind it and the choices that were made to get us to the food system that we have. I mean, Fair World Project, we're a nonprofit and we do education and advocacy work around fair trade and food justice related issues. And that analysis is all really grounded in a larger vision for a just economy and a food system that can really nourish all of us, the people who grow the food, eat it, and the planet we live on. I think the podcast came about as an outgrowth of that and also a desire to really hear people's voices and take that next step in storytelling and engagement. So, I mean, I think palm oil is a, a really great example of how the industrial food system works. Palm oil is a staple food in West Africa, and it has been for thousands and thousands of years when you think about industrial palm oil, right? Like if you go into your kitchen now and open up the cupboard, you know, you'll see palm oil on the ingredients in so many processed foods. In the last 20 years, there's been a real massive expansion of palm oil plantations, which has meant clearing land, which then destroys the homes of indigenous and forest dwelling communities, as well as habitat for a lot of animals. So that's really where you see that destructive element of palm oil come in, that it's not the crop itself, it is that push for more and cheaper stuff everywhere. And that's having huge consequences for the climate. One of the biggest contributors to the climate crisis, animal agriculture and beef specifically, like coffee and chocolate are definitely up there. So, you know, you see how this race to the bottom for more cheaper stuff is really fueling exploitation and of people and the environment. I often talk about, you know, when you're talking about chocolate, that chocolate and the key ingredients in it, cocoa and sugar, really grew up alongside the transatlantic slave trade. And that that model of absolutely underpaying people for their labor, just stealing labor, is built into the model of chocolate. And it has never escaped from that. Just about how then all of that comes around and is fueling the climate crisis. And we see globally again and again how that those impacts are hitting hardest, those who are least responsible for the roots of the climate crisis. Like in the podcast, we spoke to a woman who's working on the island of Fiji with sugar farming. And, you know, in the time that we were developing the series, a tropical cyclone hit that island, just wiping out so many sugar farm families' livelihoods. And that's a reality of this climate crisis is that these cyclones are becoming more extreme and more frequent. There are ways to do just about every crop and food product in a way that isn't destructive, right? And it's just this attempt to do it super cheap and really on massive scale that is the thing that becomes destructive. There are people who have been growing, you know, palm oil, for example, in their communities in uh, with what are we're now naming regenerative organic practices for a really long time. And it's a matter of shifting and focusing and supporting those. You know, again, then we need to also look to policy change to rein in those corporations. Because if the choices that you and I have in the grocery store are all driven by what's most profitable for corporate shareholders, there aren't gonna be good choices. 